but who in the f sells to Alabama? It needs a new deck, so. They painted Nebraska. I know this girl. She's gonna say that thing down. I think that you guys know us well enough to know everything that I want to say right now. You know, just like put a sticker over to countertop. This deck's a whole thing. Of course, I want to crawl in there and see if I fit. All right. This isn't a major project. And we're super excited. Okay, you guys, we are in a Tiana 37. It's a 1976, and how are you feeling about this one? Let's buy it. Who wants to buy it? Like, buy now. It, serious, like, 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 well, we said that about the last one. We said that about the North Star. We said, let's just put in an offer. So we're feeling better about this one than the North Star? Well, it's the size. It's got all the things, right. and it's a it's really, it's in our budget. It's it's much more roomy. I mean, it has a full get. It's let, Let's just show you. you guys so right off the bat sorry for the quality of the video i'm shooting with my iphone because you know we met a broker here and I, i'm not going to show up with like a bunch of camera gear so he's given us some time with the boat and this is what we're working with so um this door is actually super cool so i'm in the salon right now and this is obviously the door to go into the v-birth and the head area but it also is the door to the head. So this is where our hanging locker would be. Would be. But it's not. So they've installed a 16,000 BTU air conditioner in my closet. If I'm traveling and I'm spending all of my money on the right boat that I'm gonna live on, I need, I need somewhere to put my clothes. I'm sorry. I'm not going to just shove them nowhere because there's nowhere. There is nowhere. So this, this space is huge and it's very, very important. Um, so Hal and I were talking and I think, let, let me show you. I think that we can actually, first of all, I don't think that we need an AC system this big on this boat. This is only a 37 foot boat, 16,000 BTUs. I know you're going to say that we need that much and you're probably right and what i'm thinking is maybe we could install it up here in this area um this is a i don't know if it will fit in there this is well it looks bigger in real life than it does on camera but that might be a little tight anyway but this is not there's plenty of room in this um this right here is a bigger space than what it's currently in um how thinks that we could probably even put it down there but I think we'd probably be better off putting it in the back, back there. But then we'd have to run the ductwork. And I'm thinking that that ductwork can be ran through here and, and put through a vent here. Because they've already installed a vent there. So we could essentially do the same thing right there, I think. And then Hal said, well, but how are we going to get air all the way in the V-berth? Because that's kind of a long way. And I said, well... Maybe we could also run um, under the settee here in the back, maybe run some smaller ductwork underneath that just runs right through there. And I really don't think this is as complicated as it sounds. And just run it right up through here. And it'll come right up through the back of this hanging locker, right? I mean, this is just, this is just plywood. So it would basically come through over here. It would come through a hole here. 
and we'd run it up that way and then I guess come through a hole right here and then run to a vent that we would put over there. I really don't think that that's going to be that hard to do. Um, if you have a boat and this is something that you've already done, obviously please let us know what your thoughts are on that. Um, I, I really, I think that's, I think that's very doable. Hal, what are your thoughts about moving that AC system? Well, it can definitely be moved. I just don't know how until it's my boat and I can start tearing into it. Yeah. Uh, a lot of this stuff, it is an older boat, so some of the hatches are swelled, so forth and so on, and I really don't want to go pulling things off and potentially breaking them when I don't own it. But I know it's completely doable, and I want out of that hanging locker, or at least in the bottom of the hanging locker. I'm not going to show you guys this head yet, because... That's another that's another project. Um, look at the look at the V-berth. Okay, so here we are with the V-berth. And of course we have our big centerpiece right here with the cushion. Uh, all this fabric looks really good. Let's see if this is yeah, a little bit of storage. A little bit of storage in here. <laughs> some storage here and uh chain locker there yeah hell do you fit do you want to do you want to come crawl in here and see if you fit of course i want to crawl in there and see if i fit all right okay how's six foot two so finding something that does that oh, fit yeah stretching out as long as i can my toes and my head doesn't touch this will be my side with ac vent yeah <laughs> for as long as the AC stays. <laughs> for as long as the AC stays. That's one of the last projects. I think we should do what nobody's ever done what? on YouTube before. What? Whatever sell we want. Sell to Alabama. You want to sell to Alabama? People do that all the time on YouTube. Why are they? Well, who in the f sells to Alabama? People who are in the Gulf. Oh, well. All right. I wasn't going to show you guys this immediately, but let's go for it. I think that you guys know us well enough to know everything that I want to say right now. Um, yeah. So I'm going to have to uh, budget some sandpaper. Can we buy <laughs> sandpaper by the Connex box? Well, I'm sure we can find some <laughs> wholesale way for, <laughs> for the head. Oh man, you guys know I love my I love my teak and this isn't something that I would ever do to it. No offense to people who want to paint um really nice wood, but uh yeah, nope, that that's nope, this is a project for me for sure. And there's some like, you know, storage and stuff like that obviously, which is nice. Those are pretty deep too. And then there's this, oh. Which, you know, that's not really great storage but now the other part of this is that i don't know what was here as far as a countertop I, I i'm gonna find out pretty quick because this is like a i don't know i've never even thought to use anything like this but it's like a sticker thing and it's definitely coming up i don't know i mean i'm not gonna pull it off right away in fear of what it looks like underneath and having to remove adhesive and that kind of stuff but um yeah that's definitely that's something that we're gonna be, I'm going to be doing. Okay, so moving forward. So this is our salon. I've got it uh, nice and put together, but this is where the chain plates are leaking. And there are these facial, oh, that halyard's slapping out there, but um, these are the little facial pieces that go on top of that. Um, so these do get covered back up. Once we're done with this project, these go back on and there's some little hooks there for some shorter fishing rods and things of that nature. Overall, the cushions look great. A ton of storage back here. Um, these big pockets over here. Look, we have a place to put alcohol. There's more places to put alcohol. Robert Perry was obviously a closet wino. And look what we have. Ha <laughs> ha. We have our butterfly hatch here. And these handrails look really nice. And all this headliner is, it's like a Corian, but it's uh, its nice. Um, I don't really understand what the deal. Oh no, these are for the, the handrails outside. I've, 
I guess. Um, I don't really know why all of these. Can somebody tell me why all of these? Little loops. Um, why the... uh, hang netting and stuff up with. Yeah, but why so many loops? Like, you only need, like, two loops. Somebody wanted options. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so this is our galley. Have you noticed they put a sticker over the countertop? Yeah, I know. That's what I was saying. They did the same thing in the head. That's coming off the day we own the boat. You got a connector point I don't right know. there when you're cooking it. It's real. Connector point? Yeah. Oh, for a little lifeline or something? Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, okay, so this is not a gimbal stove. Yeah. Okay, so the refrigeration works oh i can't open these with the stickers i can't i can't even Take open that first. yeah i tried both um but yeah obviously you've got access from up top and down below under here we have a hot water heater that works and we have a tiny little water maker i don't know how many gallons per hour but um you know, it's a little guy and it's been pickled. So cross on our fingers that that works out. Our space for our plates and bowls and all of that. Um, double sink. I know that there's a lot of controversy on that. I prefer the double sink and I actually really, really like how one is little and one is big. So. Salt water works. That's not raw water is it oh, no that why would that be raw water i don't think so it's a little salty is it no oh, it's not <laughs> yeah, my hands are really salty. your hands are salty i'm going to insert a video that we took previously of the engine here Our, our panel here obviously pretty straightforward there's no EPIRB on the boat we're gonna we're gonna get that yeah so obviously engines under here it's the Yanmar 4JH3G I want to say I don't know uh, 40 horse um, it's not the original engine um, but it has about 3700 <laughs> The engine has about 3,700 hours on it, and it is not the original, which um, some people would say, oh, that's kind of high. Well, here's my, here's my thinking on that. If it's done 3,700 hours since that engine has been in the boat, that means that the people used the engine. They used the boat, they used the engine, and it looks pretty clean. So I have a feeling that it was used and maintained. Um, I don't have any problem with higher engine hours if it's been used and maintained properly. These engines can get a ton of hours. It's not extremely common, but that's because most people end up letting their boats sit and things like that, or they don't know how to maintain them properly. Um, but I would bet with that many hours, that means the boat was consistently being used. And I would bet that they were maintaining it as well. That would be my guess. Now, there's no guarantee on that. We have a nav station here, and this opens up, obviously. There's a, there's a Garmin here, looks like a little yeah, all the 40, it looks like it's gonna be a 4210 or something. No, it's a 741 XS. Is this one a ham? Uh, that's what I was trying to find out, and everything went crazy. So if you allow oh, everything right. to go crazy for a second, I'll figure it out. Okay, yeah, hold on, what's this though? Oh, uh, that's another GPS. Yeah, I know. What? Which one? Uh, ancient. Oh wow. GPS. Okay. Well, I had it. I had one of those on a supply boat that I delivered twenty years ago, and it was old when back then. <laughs> yeah. All right. Do you want to figure out the radios? Yeah. I 
work. It doesn't work. What did that turn on? What is that? A oh, it's fan. a fan. Wait, what did you just turn on? Stereo, Stereo TV. TV. Oh, okay. Control. All right. So it just flips on these outlets. Okay, so stereo TV flips on on the outlets, which might turn this on. Which this might become my favorite. Oh, it's hmm. Um, could it be unplugged? What does this go to? What is? I mean. Oh, it very well could be unplugged. That, that's what right. I was saying. Well, I'm I not, know it's can power. It's I'm not going to mess with this right now. All right, so. Basically what's happening is, this is fiberglass, right? Um, so these are your chain plates. And this has been leaking for a long time, apparently. And it's been running down here, it's rotting out this wood, and it's ran all the way down here. This is, this is your like rounded settee here, the cushions are out. And this is marine grade plywood. And it stops right here, like this is fiberglass, pretty much from here down, um, which is great news because we're not replacing a bunch of wood underneath. It's just this. Um, so it's ran down and it's in here and this extends all the way down this rot. So it's been just pulling water. Um, but the other thing is this back here. So you've got these wood slats and then you've got wood behind here. Well, this has its own problems. Um, there's a hole over here on this side and there's cracks and holes over here. And frankly, I don't know why, I would like to know why, because, you know, sometimes when you see things like this on boats, you have to ask yourself why, because it might open up a bigger question or a bigger problem, and then the can of worms opens and the whole thing. But um, everything else looks pretty solid over here. This doesn't scare me, but I think that we're going to have to pull all these slats off, and they're just these little tacks here. We have to pull all that off and then put a new piece of plywood in here and then Put them all back in. Um, this down here, I'm not exactly sure how we go about it. I don't know if we would just cut and replace this whole piece or if we would just cut a section and replace that. But either way, it's not something that has to be done right now. Uh, we can sail this boat home. Um, we drove many hours to get here. Not many hours. We're still in Florida, but, <laughs> uh, you know, we can sail this home like this. So this isn't, this is not a deal breaker. Um, but it definitely lowers the value of the boat and it is going to be a little project. So it's not cracked. That's the paint. This is the plywood behind it's all rotten. It's connected to this because this over here is solid where this is solid. But that would have to be coming in from chain plates. Yeah. Or, that's uh, not I'm sorry, not chain plates, your stanchions because this is your, your backing plate for that stanchion, but it doesn't look it's like not, it's not leaking from there, but where is this water coming in from is my question. It's some place. It comes in and it soaks. And it's rotting all the way this way? Yeah. Well, the water... You think so? Well, the water will wet. Well, we'll know when we pull this whole piece out. We'll see exactly what's going on. Yeah, so we'll pull the chain plates off and inspect all that. We may have to replace, but we'll rebed and replace yeah. or put put these back in depending on what we come up with and after that's all done and watertight this isn't a major project okay so this is a pilot berth um but let me say this this is like really roomy okay so there's uh, a wind vane here this is actually quite wide i have no doubt in my mind that hal and i could sleep here if we needed to this is a little locker and down here you have a bunch of shelves you've got more drawers down here and storage underneath so there's i mean someone like if we wanted to travel kind of semi long term with someone or do like some big passages um or crossings with a friend or another couple if they were thin um we could totally put them in here or we could, if they were bigger than us, we could put them up there and Hal and I could definitely make do in this. And I don't think that would be too bad, to be honest. Okay. All right, so we found these inside 
And these are our cockpit cushions. Hal was nice enough to go put them out here. Um, it's all teak underneath. We'll talk about that teak in a few minutes, but footwell down here is all teak. And uh, let's look at that. This is our compass, and this is the compass light. So the deal with these is it's throwing this error code. I don't know if you can see that. Error, error. It says, oh, that's started to do, oh, oh, oh. Okay, that's starting to work. That one wasn't working a minute ago at all. And then the autopilot here, it looks like it's trying to do something. So I don't know, these are iffy and we were thinking that it, there might be just corrosion back here. So I think we could probably maybe get those working. I've got this, which you can access um, like all your steering and everything back here. So there's some rust down there. And I'm, I'm just a little iffy about that. And that steering cable you guys can see. I'm not sure how to feel about that. I, I'm sure it's not just gonna snap right now, but I'm thinking that steering cable is probably gonna need to be replaced sooner than later. Okay, so here we go with our winches. I wanna make sure everything looks good on these. That's an Anderson. These are the old Barlows. That one over there? Same as that. All right. The boat does come with a little outboard. I think it was a five horse, I wanna say. And we do have a davit set up here with a West Marine tender, looks like an eight foot tender, and solar. So there's like three, I thought he said there were three solar panels. Yeah, so there's one here another panel here on the side. We don't know how many watts. The owner doesn't really know how many watts, I don't think, and it's just something we'll have to find out. The inverter system, Hal said all that stuff looks good. It's all under here. I'll have him go through that with you guys, but there's one more thing right here I wanna show you. Okay, so I'm not gonna talk about the teak deck yet, but um, this is, obviously the worst of it. I mean, I'm not obviously, you haven't seen the rest of it, but the rest of it is fair. This is bad. Um, they put duct tape on it, but this is gonna have to be redone. I mean, that looks like fiberglass, but yeah, we're gonna have to pull this all apart and do something about it. The wood isn't so bad. And the reality of this is, this is the original deck and it's a 1976. So, there shouldn't be a teak deck on a boat this old. Um, and I'm shocked that it isn't causing a lot of problems. With that said, I am not going to spend a whole lot of time on this right here. I'm gonna try to put this back together as best as we can. And it'll be what it'll be until we get a new deck on this boat because this deck, like I'm shocked that it's even still here. So, you know, once a new deck is on the boat, this is gonna change anyway. And that's a huge job. Um, that is not a cheap thing to do, taking the teak off and fiberglassing, um, and it reduces the value of the boat greatly. My thought is why and how is it already, how is it not already an issue? Because it just, it should be. It should be by now. We have a little tiny bimini here. Canvas is great. We have this Dodger here. Canvas is good, but there's an area over here where it's starting to rip. And there's a really new sail cover on this. Why are there so many snaps? Wow. And this is a, a cover for this. So that Isinglass is pretty dirty. Um, we'll see how that cleans up. If it doesn't clean up very well, then we'll either need to... I don't know if I would pay to replace the Isinglass when the canvas already has wear. I think I would just replace 
the entire Dodger. All right, so here's one more thing that I haven't really even mentioned to Hal, but I really want him to look at with me. Okay, so right here we have uh, some water damage down here. And while it looks like it's okay, even though that's really soft right there, that's definitely rotten. Um, I'd like to know if it's a current issue or if it was just previously an issue and they fixed it. And I don't really know, <coughs> but that is soft. Um, a little bit like this does not freak me out. I'm not going to, you know, not buy the boat because there's some rotten wood. Um, these are old boats, so, you know, um, but it does kind of extend over there a little bit, but this is definitely the worst of it right here. But like I said, it's been varnished over and I'm not sure exactly how's inside of there right now, but Hal says it's an outside issue. Yeah. This doesn't feel too soft in here, but it's definitely, definitely seen some water damage. I just hope that it's not still getting water damage. Well, there's no water damage in the cabinet below it. Yeah. And nothing, nothing feels, hold on. You feel something? I thought I did, but I don't, because I'm really pushing on it now. Do you have some gauges and things down here for the Yanmar? And our shore power cords. All right, so if you've been watching our videos for a while, then you already know that I'm a fan of my teak. And I love my teak interiors, and I love wood. And if it were up to me, we'd have a wooden boat, but it's really unrealistic in Florida. So this is the next best thing, in my opinion. Um, I love my Taiwanese builds. I love my William Garden designs, my Robert Perry designs, and, um, you know, I'm a sucker for a good Ted Hood too. But anyway, um, this is, this is a Robert Perry design, by the way, but it has a teak deck. But I know just due to the age that the teak deck needs to come up and needs to be replaced. Let me show you what it looks like currently, because it's really not as bad as I thought it would be. I've seen way worse. Okay, so you can see that there's been some weird repairs and, and things of that nature over the years. And there's areas where, you know, these seams are coming out. This kind of thing can often be remedied if the deck is thick enough. So over time, um, these decks will wear down and they'll get thinner and thinner. And you can pull all this out and put it back in. And that's all fine and good, but like, you have to find these little spots right here. See where it's separated? It is really hard to see, but you can kind of see the thickness of the teak deck if you look down in there. Um, and it's, you know, it's not as thick as it used to be. Um, yeah, it, the whole thing is just really wonky and that's usually how leaks begin. Now, the other thing is these little things right here that cover the screws, these are called bungs. So you can see that like some are missing, right? But not only that, um, like these are good and this shouldn't leak like that, right? But I guess someone has gone in and added new screws and there's not room to even put a bung on that. Yeah, there's a bunch, there's, there's a ton like this. They're everywhere. Okay, so there's definitely been um, they tried to seal this and it ran. And this is, this is squishy. This is gonna have to, this bung's gonna have to come out and that needs a new screw in it. So it lays flat. But here's my thinking on that. Why did all of these other ones need screws? So this is what I was talking about earlier. Like when you get on a boat and you start doing this kind of stuff, you have to ask why. So if these things were sticking up you know, and squishy like, like that one is, then that means that water could have gotten underneath any of these or all of these. This deck's a whole thing that we're gonna have to figure out for sure. Um, it doesn't scare me that bad, but I, I do need to be realistic and I know that it's at the end of its life. Yeah, a lot of this, see there's like a huge gap through here how that's not even connected to this wood anymore. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but that's completely separated. So like the deck is done. Like, let's be honest, the deck is done. All right, so there is an electric winch up here. Um, how, what did he say was wrong? Uh, he said it and I confirmed it. Um, the 
connections in the bilge are corroded, so it just needs to be cleaned. All right. And this furler do flunky. Okay. I have to get something on that. Sales in the we have two anchors up here. I think one was like a 40 pound, and I don't know about the other one. Um, yeah, multiple sales. Sales are good. And this is all looking pretty good, too. These things are really expensive to try to redo, too. So um, I'm happy that that's done, and I very well may just varnish that. I'm kind of thinking that I would just varnish this and I want to pull this off now and see. Oh yeah. Looks like it needs to be Yeah, sand that down and then finish it. Yeah. We could put some new lick sand on the top of it too, probably, if you yeah. want. Unless you kind of like it um, where you can't see through it. Because <laughs> uh. you can't see through that. <laughs> My other concern is the rigging. Yeah, there's definitely some rust in the rigging. Okay, about. this is roomy down here. Yeah. I'm getting in here because there's the inverter system down here. Hal said it was, uh, the wires were everywhere and there was like corrosion. So I don't know where he's looking, hold on. Look at the fuse and follow him back this way and it's just wadded up. So. Okay. Oh yeah, there's a lot going on in there. I can see now. It's just okay. Era. It's not like terribly, terribly unorganized though. It's kind of got some sort of. Big space here. This is huge. Wow. It's my storage. All right, I'm coming out. and we're super excited. Well, uh, the only problem with it is this girl's gonna have to buy stock in 3M sandpaper. Because <laughs> it's about to go up. They painted a brass foot. I know this girl, she's gonna sand that thing down. Getting that paint off. Yeah, I am. I'm gonna varnish that. I'm gonna sand that down and that's gonna, you know, match the rest of the boat. But, um... Yep. Yay! We need a sandpaper sponsor. Dear 3M. <laughs> There's a lot to do if we get this boat, uh, but I think it'll all be fun things. I think there'll be some learning involved and putting old skills back to use. I mean, I haven't done any bright work in years, but um, whip that out again and, and, and get to it because there's tons of it to do, so. Did you hear that diesel fire out? Oh, wow. So yeah, the engine, Burn. It barely even made a chug sound. Yeah, it just fired whoop, right off. And, sound like a sewing machine. We can diesel dan it or sell it. Now the little outboard might need some help getting going, but he's kind of the outboard master anyway. So I'm just gonna let him let him go to town. Actually, that would probably be a really good moment for you to 
teach me how to get an outboard going again. Cause that's something that like back in the day when I lived on the hook, you know, it was like the outboard was always shot. You always had to do something. And, and it's funny because like 20 years ago, I knew way more about outboards than I do now. <laughs> and I've not had to do any of that. So maybe you could give me a refresher course on, on getting these outboards going again. Cause I'm definitely going to need it. You know, it's not a large boat. And I know initially we were looking for something bigger. Uh, the budget just, life happens, the budget drops and um, that's okay. We, we still worked with what we had and we got the best possible thing that we could find with what we had and we're not afraid of projects and we're excited. So, um, yeah. Yeah, I think, I think we've done well. I think we've done good on this hunt. We were not able to show every single thing that we looked at for a number of reasons. Um, most brokers don't want you to sit there and film a YouTube video in front of them because they don't have time for that. We had some private offers on boats where the people didn't want them to be seen. Um, you know, things like that. So, um, yeah, you didn't see it all, but you saw what we, what we could show. So, that's that. And uh, if you are not subscribed to this channel yet, please subscribe because we've got big things happening here and um, lots of lots to do and probably like immediate adventures because we got to get this thing home it's on the east coast of florida we're in the gulf coast of florida so there's going to be an adventure like straight away oh and i don't care what that survey comes back with i'm sailing that boat back to panama city uh, around a thousand mile trip on the rigging and how that boat sits right now that's happening you heard it through Key West via Dry Tortugas because I'm going to die. Oh, yeah. So we have to go around the Keys. So that'll be fun. We'll go through Okeechobee. And we'll go through, we'll probably stop into Cocoa Beach. So all of our Cocoa Beach people, we're on our way. Maybe. They haven't even accepted the offer. <laughs> all right. Let's wrap this up. Love y'all. Bye. Bye.